With banks going bust left, right, and center, is Bitcoin the brightness to shine the way inside of the markets? Can it actually be this place where you can be your own bank? I'm gonna be explaining today the technical analysis viewpoint of what's going on in the world right now with the banks, with the a lot of fear going on. I'm gonna be going into the charts going over from a trader's technical analysis perspective what's happening and exactly what I am looking for next. I truly feel if you just block out the distractions around you, give me your full focus, you will learn something from this video and you will walk away by the end of it very content and happy that you paid close attention. You're gonna know exactly what I'm training for, the exact levels that I'm looking for next and well, really you're gonna have a great understanding of the market right now. So, hope that sounds good to you. If it does, you know what to do. <laughs> Pay attention and let's begin. So, Bitcoin. Picking up where I left off my video on Friday. We're obviously at the time we were just hitting the top of this CC Fibonacci level. Okay, so we were just coming into this support level. And for me, I made it kind of clear that this for me was not a long yet. I needed to wait for more time, more data to come into the market. There was not enough confluence off of just simply hitting the CC for me to jump into a long trade. So I remained patient, calm and collected, and I'd done my lower term time frame analysis to try and find a trading setup. Okay, so we understand the levels that we were coming into, but it required a little bit more time and patience. And I gave you inside of that live stream, while we were still here on the chart, so specifically here, I gave you the channel high and the channel low. And then we had to remain patient for this to, you know, come and take into effect, right? And we can kind of see how this went over the next, you know, really 48 hours. Well, like I posted over on here on, on Twitter yesterday, Okay, so Bitcoin on this rise took out the channel high that I gave to you on Friday while we were here. It then come back and it back tested the CC Fibonacci level and the middle of the channel before moving up to reclaim that channel resistance, now flipping it into support and holding that support for a very nice amount of time before that continued rise to the upside. Okay, from here, I'm gonna explain in a lot of detail a few key factors that you need to be aware of as a trader if you truly wanna successfully trade this, okay? So, of course, we're gonna be exa examining this section of the chart right here. The level above us is clearly 21,637, which is a NPOC. And well, I'm gonna show you this in a bit more detail in this video, but we really simply go straight through that level with no reaction. But first of all, I wanna explain a few key things to you here. So what happened here? As remaining, we had to remain patient. Remember, this was the channel. This is what it was looking at at the time. We knew the bullish scenario is break of that channel and holding it as support. If we do break that channel and hold it as support, we know that we're looking for that rise to the upside. You know, this is exactly what we were going through on Friday's live stream, okay? So we've got our channel to be trading. We know if we hold this as support, we're looking for that big rise. Well, this is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. You can see we hold it as support and then we're looking for the big rise after that, okay? So simply trading the charts. I wanna show you a few key factors here that led to this though. Obviously at the time, while we're in this section of the chart. There's no need to be bullish at that moment in time. There's nothing on the chart yet that shows you that this is a good long opportunity. You must remain patient, wait for more data, wait for more time, wait for more EG analysis to come into play before you can get this bigger heads up or there is gonna be a move to the upside. Let me explain this in a lot of detail. I truly want you to understand. Here, nothing bullish at all. We then though get this rise to the upside Friday night, Saturday morning, right? Now we've got a bit of a trend change from lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. We've now made a high. We come and we back test the CC in the middle of that channel. That is then starting to form the potential higher low. We've changed market structure here with making a simple high, but it's not confirmed yet, right? We come down and we get the higher low. We then break the top of this channel. And instead of doing a fake out up and straight back down, we're actually spending hours and hours and hours above that channel. We're building now value above the channel. And as mentioned, this was something that we'd be looking for for a bullish scenario, breaking and holding that level with a few touches here as support before a big move to the upside. Well, we can see how that really came to fruition as then we back tested this as support, but with one major thing that you need to be aware of. And that is when you look at the order flow. When you look at the order flow here, you had 
massive bullish divergences forming. So while you're back testing that channel, you also have very big bullish divergences, okay? So if you are truly trading the charts and you understand what you're looking at here, okay, you've got the education behind you, then you can understand that there's a high likelihood of a move to the upside. Why? We've broken the channel, we're back testing it as support with massive, massive bullish divergences, okay? We then have also now changed market structure, high, low, higher, high, higher, sorry, higher high, higher low, higher high. So we've got a confirmed market structure change. We've seen massive bullish divergences. We've seen the overall CC now hold, and with more time and data, back testing the CC again, breaking the channel, big bullish divergences. Now we're looking for the rise to the upside. What was our next level? 21,637, that was our NPOC above us. I wanna explain and tell you right now, I am actually looking for higher. And I want to explain this in a, you know, I really want you to understand because sometimes people can get confused. So I would say like right now I'm locally bullish, okay? I'm not short in my local range. Shorts that, you know, you could have taken over the past week, for example, from the Eagle session, from the harmonic, they should be closed. Um, here locally I am looking for higher and I'm going to explain why, okay? So we're going to start to move, move into a more lower term time frame here and we're going to add on some of these levels. So particularly, I just want to focus really quickly on this NPOC that we obviously had above us for the case of the, you know, this bullish scenario. It's like I said over here on, on Twitter when I, when I posted that, you know, we are going to have to be looking for higher. After you've seen this, there was a few more things that come into, to plat, into you know, factor that you can take a, into consideration. As you can see, I'm in the group, <laughs> in, this, in the Champions Discord, pump it. But why? Why was I saying pump it? Well, you also can take into consideration the funding rate. And this is to due to, you know, the, the, the difference between spot and derivatives prices. You can also take into consideration what's happening with, uh, you know, Circle and USDC, what's happening with Tether premiums, right? This is all coming into effect to affect the funding rate. And we had an extremely bullish funding rate yesterday. So this is just another thing that you can take into consideration of, you know, trade the charts, right? We've changed market structure. We've reclaimed resistance of the channel into support. This is leading for a rise to the upside. The massive bullish divergences here are leading to a rise to the upside. Well, then you also add in like the funding rate. This is a big bullish factor. Well, then you start to maybe contemplate fundamentals with banks going offline. Well, you know, many refer to Bitcoin as being the bank. It's like I said here, and with all the bank problems, I think we all know which one will never go offline, hashtag Bitcoin. Uh, and I really stand by that. I maybe better than anyone, uh, I'm not gonna say that. I just say, say I have a very good understanding of the use case of Bitcoin in terms of it can be a bank. I've had banking problems left, right and center, kicked out of banks, you know, for, for reasons of being involved in cryptocurrency. So for me, it's like, I hate banks, I can say that. Very honestly, I hate banks. I have legal cases against banks because of how awful they are. Okay, I have legal battles. Like, not a fan of banks. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and you know, I've had to move my money into Bitcoin and essentially use this as a bank. So I myself can say Bitcoin is a great asset. Fundamentally, like again, I just trade the charts. I trade the technicals, but I, I do see the use case of this asset. For me, it, it is nice, and people are going to have their you know opinions. But for me, it does have a use case, and and I simply do, I, I do simply like Bitcoin in that regard. Okay, so yeah, the funding rate, the, these are all technical reasons of why we were looking for a rise to the upside. And anyway, I wanted to explain briefly this NPOC 21637. We'll look at this even on the one minute chart. Really simply, I always tell you, no reaction, no trade. If we go straight through the level, there's no trade to be has. Look at this even down on a one minute chart, ladies and gentlemen. You go straight through that level, and on the one minute chart, you even get the back test. Straight through the level, back test it as support, continued rise to the upside. If you have a level, and it gets no reaction and you go straight through, there's no short trade to be had. We're only looking if we get some sort of visible rejection. Then you have that trade, okay? So really simply then, we've got everything bullish lining up here. We've got our next level to the upside. When we reach that, we go straight through it and we even backtest it as support. That is very nice indeed. That is a very key level to be reclaimed bringing us up to where we are now. Of course, that level is now tapped, so we can delete it. So, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I, I personally am uh, locally here bullish. What does that mean? It means I'm looking for higher. That could be, you know, another one, two percent to the upside, hit my target, get a rejection, and then I can flip 
to open in a short and looking for lower. So when I say I'm here locally bullish, it means I'm not in a short from this local section of the chart. Okay, I'm not short from this swing failure pattern. Of course, we got a swing failure pattern here, a little bit of an ABC pullback. And for me, uh, I'm now looking for higher. I'm expecting this high to be taken out. So I'm locally bullish from looking for this high to get taken out onto the bigger range point of control. Okay, so our bigger range point of control is just above this high. So for me, this is, um, I, I just need you to understand this. When I say I'm locally bullish here, I'm not in a short from this section of the chart and I'm looking for higher. Some people can be like, oh my God, Daniel's bullish. I'm just going to long. Uh, this is a very bad thing to do. Okay. I, I wouldn't long where we are here. I am bullish for higher. That could simply be something like this. Come up higher, tag the level, get a swing fire pattern, come back down. I'm in a short trade. And then where some people will then, I'll come on and do my next video and say, hey, I'm in a short trade. And they're like, hey, Daniel, you said you were bullish in your last video. What you have to remember is I'm bullish here locally. If my target gets hit and I get a rejection, well, then I'm not going to remain bullish and not going to take a, you know, oh my God, I need to stay in long trades. No, I'm trading the charts. Just like here, when we first hit the CC, I myself said, this is not a good long trade. I need to wait for more time. I need to wait for more data. If you've done that, you remain patient. You would have seen that in the charts. Market structure changes, rises to the upside, bat tests of CC and the middle of the channels. This is the key section though, reclaiming the channels resistance into support with once again, those massive, look at that massive bullish divergences forming on the reclaim. Understanding if that's the case, you look for a move to the upside. You trade the charts and what's happening. You can have biases and wants, but at the end of the day, trade the charts. You trade the charts, you look for the pump then after this, next level to the upside, simply blasts straight through. There's no trade to be had, you continue to look higher. So yeah, I am bullish here. I'm not in a short now from this section. For me, this was the ABC retracement and I'm looking for another move up here. For me, that could simply be taking out this high for a swing failure pattern, okay? Be nice to hit into the bigger range point of control there around $23,000. And then I'll make another, guess what, informed decision. Do we do something like that where we take out a high, get a rejection, come back down? Well, then I obviously get a short trade, okay? Simple as that. Or do we do something like this? You know, flip that level into support, and then we still look for higher. Then once again, I'll do the same bit of analysis. Do we hit that level and get a rejection or do we simply keep going straight through these levels? It's a level to level environment. Set the alerts, check the reaction. Of course, we can be looking at things such as the divergences here to give us good heads up of what's to come next using the order flow, okay? This is what we teach every day of the week. This is how I trade every day of the week, right? For me, it's very important to remain calm, collected, all of this news going around, a lot of fear, a lot of FUD. It's at the end of the day, it's irrelevant to us as traders. As traders, we got to focus on the charts. This is what gives us our edge. This is what gives us our high probabilities. I'm not going to trade off the news. I can be aware of it, but at the end of the day, I trade the charts. And that is what helps you have good win rates. Okay, that's what helps us, you know, understand the market and where it's more likely to go next. I will always say this, that actually, the news, you know, you got really good news when you're at support. You got really bad news while you're at resistance. And so, the, the, you, sh you know, the, the saying, you show me the chart, I'll tell you what the news is going to be. Not the exact headline of X, Y, Z, but I can tell you whether the news is going to be bullish or bearish by looking at the charts. Because that's just how the, how the world seems to work. The charts influence a lot. People can have their opinions on that, and I'm welcome to mine too. And I believe, show me the chart, show me the tell, I'll tell you the news. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just will end with this uh, little bit. If, if you're interested in this, obviously I mentioned, you know, Bitcoin. You can be your own bank. Um, just putting it out there. Do your own research. At the end of the day, you know, no pressure or not telling you to do anything. I'm just putting this out there that if you're interested in that, you can do your own research into the fact that now Bitcoin does have a card. So you can use essentially your Bybit account to be a bank, right? You can use that as a, as a card and go and spend in shops and use your crypto. For me, this is a very interesting uh, topic. I myself am applying and for me, this is a positive thing for crypto in general, right? So if you're interested in the Bybit card, just putting it out there that that now is possible. Bybit do have their own card to use, which I personally think is very cool. And as always, I will let you know and remind you, if you're interested in taking advantage of that, we are obviously have an affiliate link with them. And if you want to then now Bybit with our affiliate link, you can get up to $30,000 trading bonus.
Of course, this is a deposit bonus up to $30,000 for free as well as you can get discount on fees off of your trade. So there's obviously a lot of bonus for yourself if you're interested in trading on Bybit, in taking advantage of any of their services and features while well, signing up via our affiliate link because you can be getting access to the $30,000 deposit bonus as well as you know discount on trading fees, et cetera. So I'm just putting that out there if you're interested, no pressure at all. Um, you know, There's no sponsorship from Bybit for me to say this. I'm doing it because that's where I trade. That's where I am interested in. And you know this is the services that I'm taking advantage of. And you know we've got an affiliate deal should you want it to. No pressure at all, just putting that out there. Uh, if you do, leave that in the link in the description down below as well as our website. As you know, that's where you can get access to all of our trading plans, live analysis as it comes in, the trading journal, the vault, which includes all of the new templates. And of course, now the brand new Elliott Waves course. Yes, Elliott Waves is now live on Chart Champions. So if you want to educate yourself, if you want to empower yourself, if you want to understand what these market moves are like, how you can recognize the bullish signs and be looking for a pump before it happens, well, that's the power of technical analysis. That's the power that you can have inside of trading. Look like a little bit of a magician or wizard, but it's all in the charts. It's all laid out in front of you, how to understand this and how to progress. If you want to get involved, chartchampions.com going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. I truly hope that you've enjoyed. My mission was to educate you, let you understand this price action, understand what's going on now. Why personally, I would like to see another rise to the upside, right? So um, yeah, then from here, if we get this rise and we don't get the bearish reaction, then I keep looking for higher and higher and higher. And if I do get a bearish reaction, well, then I can take the trade and you know, <laughs> look to take it down lower, right? Trade the charts. I'm happy to be long. I'm happy to be short. I'm just taking the best trading opportunities possible. Okay. So I hope that has made sense of my current bias, which is locally bullish. And then I'll take it from there if and when we hit my next level and, you know, get the reaction that I'm looking for. If we don't look for higher, if we do, I can take a short and trade it back down. Level to level trading. I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. CC Paul, I love you all and cheers everybody. Thank you. And once again, goodbye. Cheers.